All right, so we got a little bit of a story tonight about power inverters, like this one, okay? And their um, relationship to certain kinds of appliances. In this case, we're gonna talk about an electric blanket. As you can see, we got an electric blanket here, with the wires inside for heating. And um, I decided I was gonna test out running the electric blanket off of this Power Drive 150 $30 truck stop power inverter. This power inverter is, um, it's, it's actually a really nice inverter, mainly because of how its, how its outer design is. It's like a power strip. So you can see that this is shaped similar to a power strip like you would use for, a, for an electrical outlet to, to give you more outlets. But it gives you three AC outlets, it gives you USB charging, and it gives you a cigarette lighter plug on the end here. And the DC goes in right here. I modified this inverter to accept an Anderson power pole DC connector instead of a cigarette lighter adapter style plug. And I changed the uh, cooling fan to a quieter fan and did some things on the inside. But the reality of this inverter is, is that it creates what's known as modified square wave power right so if you ever shop for inverters you'll hear that term used and here's what it means so up here on the oscilloscope we've got two waveforms we have the white um it's just uh just show you the white there that is the waveform of electricity that come is coming out of that inverter i have it hooked up here to the scope that's what it looks like. That's the voltage waveform. So it's alternating current. The middle here is zero volts. It swings, it switches positive, and then it goes to zero for a little bit, then it switches negative. Zero and positive again. And it does that up and down, up and down, up and down, using a switching transistor, basically what's known as an H bridge on the inside of the inverter. So there's four transistors in there that switch back and forth to create this sort of um, synthetic AC, alternating current. What you have when you turn on your, um, you know, when you get power out of your electrical outlet in your house, is something that looks like that. Okay, this is the sine wave. So this is basically created by, you know, in most places created by big magnets spinning around inside of a big coil of wire down at the nuke plant or the or the you know being spun by a jet engine someplace burning fuel to turn mechanical generators that spin in a circle and effectively what we're seeing here is a plotting of that circle over time and it's a nice kind of up and down it's like a little roller coaster right it's very gra you know it's a nice um, rounded off uh, changing in voltage. It's not that sharp edge gnarly thing like that. So while you get the green wave out of your electrical outlet in your house off of the power grid, we're creating something that looks like that from the inverter. You might be wondering like how in the world is it that this waveform is supposed to power things just as good as the green waveform like they look so different right well the reality of the way that they design this is this steppy modified square wave is timed such that when you connect a resistive load such as a heating element such as an electric blanket to the inverter the power delivered into that resistive load is the same as you would get in the electrical outlet from the grid so if it's a 130 watt electric blanket It'll draw 130 watts off the grid and it'll draw 130 watts off this inverter. That part is good. But when I was running it, there was um, a little bit of an issue. So I started smelling that magical smell that most of us who work with electronics know all too well. And it is the magic smoke aroma was being emitted from the vicinity of this control device. This is the controller 
for the electric blanket. I never imagined how much electronics would go into power controlling an electric blanket, a heater. This thing has its own little computer right there. There's actually two integrated circuits on here. I think that's the microcontroller, U1, and this U2 I think is for the LED display. It has a multi-segment LED display on it. It's a driver for that. And then we got a triac, which is this device here. That's what actually switches the power to the heaters. And I started smelling magic smoke, and I immediately unplug it from the inverter and uh, start smelling the, the device and open up the lid and see that there is a resistor down in here, the orange ended resistor right there, that was very, very nice and warm, quite hot, much hotter than it is when it's plugged into the wall. And then I see beside that resistor there is a red film capacitor, it's probably like a 0.22 or a 0.47 microfarad film capacitor. And I immediately knew what happened. So, this thing here is intrinsically designed to operate on 60 hertz sine wave power. They have, they have baked that requirement into this device by virtue of how they design the power supply for it. So like I said, there's a computer on board this thing. All right, in that little chip, and that needs DC. It needs probably five volt DC to uh, to you know do its uh, do its thing. They derive the five volt DC ultimately from the 120 volt AC coming into this blanket through the power cord. But there's no big transformer on here. There's no switching power supply in here. How in the world do they get five volts DC out of out of 120 AC? Well. They're using what I will, I'm just going to call a capacitor input power supply. It's an ingenious, it's, it's, it's a very, very elegant um, piece of engineering power supply like this because it really allows you to economize on parts when you're building something like this. Because power supplies can be expensive, especially when it's compared to a device that, you know, everything else isn't very is pretty cheap so the way that it works is I try to draw over here kind of a little diagram of it it may may or may not be a you know like this but what we have is we have our AC power coming in here 120 volts 60 Hertz the first thing it hits is that capacitor all right then it goes through that resistor and then it gets rectified and then there's a Zener diode I think I saw in there that probably regulates the voltage here to about to, you know, 5 volts. I'm, I'm going to guess it's 5. Maybe it's 3.3. I don't know. But they regulate the voltage down to low DC level using what they call a shunt regulator. Basically, the Zener diode maintains a constant voltage across its terminals, and it shunts the current to ground in order to maintain that voltage. And we do that by bleeding over current through these um, these impedances and the capacitor does most of the work so the capacitor was selected by the engineers who made that controller such that it has a certain impedance or certain resistance capacitive reactance as we would call it with 120 volt or with um, with 60 Hertz on it because if you recall Capacitors are dependent on frequency. So the frequency dependence of this impedance is inversely one over, it's inversely proportional to frequency. So if we make the frequency higher, the impedance will go down. Capacitors pass high frequency. So high frequency wants to go through the capacitor, low frequency gets kind of pushed, you know, kept, kept behind. Um, the way that I think of a capacitor is if you had a pipe and the pipe had a rubber bladder suspended in it, right? And water is sloshed back and forth in that pipe, and the rubber bladder transmits the, the, the force of the sloshing water to the water on the other side, even though they're not in direct contact with, with each other. And the higher the frequency of this 
back and forth action, the less displacement there is in this rubber bladder and the more the vibration that gets transmitted through the bladder. All right. And if you have a very low frequency, the displacement exceeds what the bladder can move and you don't get as much momentum transfer from this side to this side. That's kind of the hydraulic analogy of a capacitor that I like to, to think of here. Uh, but instead of water, we have electrons piling up on the plates of the capacitor. But it's basically just the same idea. Um, <clears throat> and what's, go <clears throat> what's going on here is, um, okay, well, my inverter's creating, it's 60 hertz. It's 60 hertz, right? I mean, the frequency, look at this. You can see that the sine wave basically lines up pretty much with the, the square waves. They basically overlap each other. 60 hertz, 60 hertz. I think those measurements were even on here. And I cleared them. Oh, well. But nonetheless, how in the world is it there's a problem here? Does the capacitor care if it's a, if it's a, uh, a steppy looking square wave versus a sine wave? As long as the frequency is the same, it shouldn't care, right? Well, the reality is not so much the fundamental frequency of these waveforms, but the harmonics that are involved. So let's turn off the sine wave. And let's try to zoom in on our oscilloscope here and see what we can see at the edges, the edges of the other dimension here. All right, this is gonna be very much the reason why we're burning up that controller because the electricity coming off of this modified square wave inverter is what some people will call dirty power. And what that means is that it's loaded up with harmonic current, you know, harmonic voltages of higher frequency that are superimposed on the waveform. And we may not be able to get a good picture of it here. But basically there is higher frequency noise that's embedded in this signal. All right? And when you switch current electricity really fast like that, it creates a lot of um, electromagnetic interference. So let's see if I have my AM radio here. Let's, uh, let's do a, an acoustic illustration of what I'm trying to say with this stuff. All right, so we have a radio. Put it on AM. And set it to like 500 kilohertz. Okay. So. All right, here we go. Hear all that noise? That is basically all of those high frequency signals that are being generated by those, fat, those transistors as they switch power on and off. And all of that energy, that electromagnetic energy at the high frequency just shoots right through this capacitor like it wasn't even there all right so if it's able to transmit signals through the air to an am radio that frequency is definitely high enough to just blast right through this capacitor we're talking tens of kilohertz hundreds of kilohertz of energy that's just superimposed on these waveforms as a result of the switching action that ends up going through the capacitor it's extra current that's not being blocked by the by the, impede, the the capacitive reactants because it's such a high frequency all that energy then goes through this circuit it bleeds through the zener diode and it pulls that current through that resistor and that resistor just couldn't take it and got really really hot we might have even heated up our we probably heated up the zener diode too hopefully you didn't cook that <laughs> 
but you know it's 60 hertz I mean, there's so many switching power supplies in this room that I can't really do a good demo, but... There's all kinds of noise here. Alright, let me put a load on this thing. Oh, there we go. So we have a load on it now. And that actually made the... See all the, the, the hash at the top of the... Uh, top of the, the, the scale here? All that high frequency energy that you see right there is just blasting right through that capacitor and generating heat in the resistor and causing it to start smoking. Now if you have a power supply like the power supply that's in your typical PC switching power supply that gets this electricity gets rectified and then it gets filtered before it hits any any other components and it takes all that energy and it basically just kind of stores it in the capacitors and and uses it rather than trying to dissipate it with a resistor so the poor electric blanket needs to run on an inverter it needs a sine wave inverter square wave will not do it yeah, so as that's just that that sharp switching action of the uh, of the transistors in the inverter. So that's just the nature of a cheap inverter. That's just because it's brute force. Just turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Action to give you a signal that is you know that that passes as AC. Oh, what do we do here? Anyways. Yep, there she is. Modified square wave, modified sine wave, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't look anything like really what comes out of your outlet in your in your house. But driven into a pure resistor, it's it works. But through capacitors and inductors and electronic components like that, you may not get the same results. So that's the story.